Greetings, YouTube. Welcome back to another session on the question, the big question about science being the new religion with Michael in Germany on today, this beautiful Saturday, June 5th. My goodness, it's June 5th, 2021, Michael. How are you doing over there in Germany? Hello, Brad, your listeners out there. Yeah, time's flying and we are getting older, so we are running out of time in this earthly existence. So we have to do as much videos and as much reviews as we can to provide useful knowledge against the works of Antichrist, which is a spirit. Don't let them fool you into believing that the Antichrist is just mere a person or an institution coming at the end of time. It's futurism. And so you see that the spirit of Antichrist was, was still in the working when Jesus Christ was walking on this earth. And that's, it. that's about it. You see, the people believe what they see. People believe what they hear. People intend to believe people instead of the word of God, which is the Bible. Well, and this it's is easy enough to do, Michael. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and this is the topic science. So what's science? We have uh, examined that in the last past five sessions. And this is session, session six now coming up with a, with a topic that uh, all the deceptions are coming down now in a row. And uh, the first line, of course, is the beginning. Where did we go? Or where have we gone? And why we are here? And where are we heading? And, and, and why is that? You see, the majority of people really think you're just a, a loosely combination of muscles, tissue, uh, fat, carbohydrates, fluids, few organs, uh, randomly, hmm? just for the fun of it. And so we are here and we are driving fast and speaking loud and eating, drinking and uh, reproducing. And that's about it. At the end of our lifespan, about 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years, whatever it may be. Yeah, but that's not the truth because you can think we can think, and that's something which is not uh, down to any organ. Yeah, of course, I know the brain, but just the brain is consisting of uh, neurotransmitting things and much, 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 and even much more fluid. But that's it. So where is the program? Where was the program for the beginning of the existence? And there are two possibilities. You see, there are always two possibilities, good and evil, uh, bright or black or bright or dark, Jesus Christ or Satan. That's why science tells you, the science from the school, the worldly science that tells you that, uh, oh, it is, has been originated by a big bang. Yeah, Suddenly, out of nowhere, something pops out and makes a little boom. And then there is it. Oh, there was it. Actually, they tell you that it was 4.6 billion years ago. That's what they told you. Um, not quite, because you see that in the old times, they didn't tell you that because the, the idea was not invented. You see, this is a theory. This has not been proven, but it has been taught as being proven as a fact it is not fact it is a theory yeah and i'm not getting into that at the moment because the origin of the theory uh, is jesuitical yeah and if we now go in all the details of all the people you see i want to do it chronologically a little bit so that uh, in the end you will find out that we are going back to the origin again you see this is the big bam this is a not so famous Swiss music group called Yellow. Yeah, it's not yellow, you might, might imagine with a W, it's just yellow. A yell, a yell, hello. Yeah, yeah. And Michael, these two guys. I got a comment. I, I just find this so hilarious that, you know, here I am, 52 years old, uh, you know, being musician myself, being influenced by a lot of European musicians. Michael says, haven't you ever heard of Yellow this morning? Uh, and I says, uh, no. And especially this Y-E-L-L-O. 
Wait, aren't you forgetting the W? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's the name of the group. Did I ever know that these guys uh, came up with the song, uh, uh, the the Oh Yeah song, you know, from mm -hmm. the 80s, you know, mm -hmm. it was huge, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't know it was yellow, Michael. And if I did know it was yellow, it went in one ear and out the other, and it was gone a long time ago. So this is very interesting. Yeah, you see, there are many, many more artists coming up with Big Bam. For example, Daryl Hall and John Oates. Their yeah, album yeah. is called Big Bam Boom. Yeah, but you you see, it could refer also to this. And this idea of uh, getting everything out of nothing uh, is very could be very capitalistic, but actually uh, is uh, originated on in the 1930s, also last century of a guy from Belgium. No, 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 not the guy you are thinking of, but it's about George Lemaitre, who was a Belgian theologian and a Catholic priest, and let me tell you, a Jesuit, who came up with the brilliant idea to explain that everything was coming from a big boom. So even when there would be a boom, where did the energy came from? So the energy had to be created in the first place. So everybody who is in the evolution theory with the big bam or bang, bang, bang. It's a big bam or big bang. So what what is it anyway? Yeah, you see you're creating or somebody or something or nothing has created anything. It is not physically true. So they are violating physical laws. It I would tell you that they're the world, the universe or whatsoever has been created out of scratch, from nothing, from scratch. Zip. Everything's there. Huh? Uh, who did it? When and why? Out of boring, nothing on television today. You see, the Big Bang means there must be energy, but the energy must come from a certain source. Nobody can tell where this source is. So it is a theory, but this theory has been taught and taught and taught and spoken and spoken and sounds to be proven theory in the textbooks. And we are not making a big fuss out of it because there are many, many, many people going into this uh, creation versus evolution thing. But just to, to see that there is absolutely no, absolutely no, um, I'm not lost of words now. Ha <laughs> ha! Cut it here. Um, uh, agreement. Ha! Huh? Agreement on how the world has been created. There are two certain groups of people. One think, oh, yeah, out of random, randomly, boom, plopped out. And the other one, us. Yeah, the minority, of course. We're doing minority report here. The minority says, oh, there must be intelligence. Because well, somebody you know, must Michael, have. I got a comment on something you said earlier, too, you know, if you don't mind. I see your computer is is hesitating. No, no, there. No, 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 no. Are you? Um, am I interrupting your train of thought here, first of all? Yeah, come on, please. OK, so. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking of this, this Jesuitical term, you know, just the, the term Jesuitical. Um, it implies that you have some kind of knowledge about what the Jesuit order is. You know, millions of people today know that the Pope is Jesuit, but do they really understand what the origins of Jesuitism are? You know, the history of the Jesuits is a, a very interesting history, but if it is seen through the lens of a mind which does not comprehend uh, Jesus Christ, then we have a problem. And we have many different instances of this problem. So we have, um, you know, so many different ways to explain uh, where the origins of things come from. I think that's what you're touching on, Michael, is, is well, people really want to know the origins, but what we're presented with 
uh, you know, in terms of our schooling and, and what we know about that uh, is uh, so buried in all of this uh, technicality, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's very, very disturbing the world we live in today because uh, we have been, um, what can we say? Uh, we've been tricked into thinking that um, there is some <clears throat> there's some um, validity or some truth in a very old creation. Well, yeah, it's old, but just how old specifically is something that can be argued with till infinity, you know, with someone that has no faith in in what Jesus Christ is is come to do in this world and and you know it's it's almost a 50-50 case of the people that we know Michael on a personal individual level that uh people have all kinds of different faith and they can admit well yeah I have some kind of uh, belief in Jesus Christ. And then there are others that have none at all. And the last thing they want to know is is anything on the faith of Jesus Christ because, you know, uh, then it gets into the church. And the church is, you know, I think got a lot of weight on its head, Michael, right now. Yeah, sure. But you see that science is a religion. It is. Yeah, so people people believe in this, but you have to ask yourself, you don't have to believe in Jesus Christ in the first place. We are showing you the things you can think about. You can really reasonable to think about the things we are telling you. It is about to get to to your own mind to make your own thoughts. This right, is Michael. The, I just wanted to touch on that because you know mm -hmm. the Jesuitism turn, the, the Jesuitical term will have no consequence for half the people. 50% mm -hmm. of the entire world, as far as I know, is going to just say, oh, Jesuits, so what? Well, yeah, duh, sure. you know? That's why, I, <laughs> that's why I haven't addressed Mr. Georges Lemaitre with his Big Bang theory in person at this yes. moment. Yes. Because we are just at the start of it. If I would now go into the, the Hubble... Uh, thing, observatoria and, and the theory, and galaxies, uh, you see, just the thing that they, all the people are speaking of the origin of the so-called universe as the Big Bang. So something was there, nobody can explain it. And you have to ask yourself the first question, where did the energy come from? And as nobody can prove, nobody was there to witness, it is and will be still a theory. It cannot be proven, therefore it is not a fact. It will be a theory. This is very, very, very important. If you don't have the foundation of it all, we, if you don't see the root of the tree, yeah, you see just the fruits, you do not know how long the, what kind of a, of, of, a, of, a, of a healthy or unhealthy tree it is. You see the fruits can be there for just one season. You have to go down to the path to the nitty gritty, and the nitty gritty is where does what is the reason for this existence, and where does the energy and everything come from? If you know the famous formula of so-called mastermind genius um, Albert Einstein, it's E equals m by c. So mass by speed would be energy, but where does the energy come from? mass um, multiplied by speed. Speed is indicated with C. Yeah. So where does the energy come from? Where does it come from? Nobody can tell you. Uh, Michael, your accent with your German accent is so strong. It almost sounded like you said Mars. What Michael was trying to say was mass. Mass. Yeah. Okay. Mass times energy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and but it's not mass time energy. I thought it's it was really interesting. I'm sure you're going to go into this, aren't you? Okay, okay. No, no. You, you have to ask yourself. Okay, nobody can prove the Big Bang because nobody can tell you when, why it happened, and 
out of which origin it did happen. So you have to assume maybe they are right, but it's still a hypothesis, it's just a theory. That's why I don't go into George mm -hmm. Demetri right now, because if we now go in all the different uh, so-called proofs he came up with, you see that we will never get finished, but we have to have a foundation. And the foundation is why was this earth created as it is? And why was the universe created? And where did the energy come from? So no, no physician or chemic or biochemical um, engineer or whatsoever can tell you they are just coming up with assumptions and with theory and with models, but they cannot prove it because nobody was there. There is no written history of the things which happened to be uh, 4.5 billion years ago. So they are just watching the sky and saying, oh yeah, you see, I got a theory. Because Mr. Um, George Lemaitre, for example, which was the Reverend Monsignor, yeah, uh, he came up with the idea to uh, look at the stars and uh, the, the, to calculate the speed of the stars and they say, oh, this is an expanding universe, so there must be a, a, a outburst. So this was his, supposed his idea to become with the Big Bang. You, you see, the thing with theories is sometimes the theory is, oh, the Earth is the disk. Or something else, yeah. And then it, 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 you see that everybody has his own theories. Yeah. Sometimes somebody carries his theories all his day long and say that, oh yeah, uh, uh, all blonde women are, huh? which is absolutely BS. But you see that coming down from this uh, point of view, I would like to have the um, uh, good, uh, good, good reading here. Let's go not down in the in the city things. You see, it has something to do with divine. Ah, very interesting, because even that uh, silly band called Yellow uh, in this song Solar Driftwood came up with the Big Bang and everything everybody else also does. So the majority of people educated in the school system traditionally believes since 1940 something, because the theory has been originated from, I think, 1936 something. Um, from a, a Jesuit or a Roman Catholic priest called Georges Henri Joseph Edouard Lemaitre. Okay, so let's go. Millions of light years. Yeah, sure. So evolution tells you, or the Big Bang theory in particular, tells you the universe is 4.5 billion years ago created by a big boom uh, randomly. Yeah, so with no purpose at all, and this is our, our blue marble, or our, our blue ball, or our earth uh, has been created. Great, huh? <laughs> Are we lucky? Michael, I can just see putting little, little clips, little audio clips from that song in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 oh yeah. Oh my, oh my. I oh mean, this my. is what musicians do. They take yeah. something like this theory, yeah. this uh, Big Bang theory, yeah, and they make it an ideology. Hey, we can have fun with this, sure, and we can make a ton of money at the same time. That's what they do, sure. And you know, the people buy it. You know why? Because it's fun. We yeah, can everybody. take the traditions and chuck them in the garbage and we can come up with something new that's entirely a lie. It's a, a lie straight out of the pit of hell. But shh, don't tell the people that. Ooh, 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 yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Having a hard time. Sorry. At the moment. <laughs> now you see. You see, what I'm going through is 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 the thing that uh, Big Bang. You see that if you if you got a if you got a child, you say that what is a Big Bang, uh. puppy? And you say that oh, the Big Bang theory. Oh, this is just a randomly television series. You see that it's the same argument, the same method like ABBA and like Genesis and all the other things. You see that to come to the conclusion that the search engines will distract you. Yeah. To see the Big Bang is something like that. Oh, sounds like a nice firecracker. Yeah, this is the so-called Big Bang. Looks looks nice, but where did the energy come from? I can tell you, they can tell you. So let's move on to the other possibility, possibility number B for the minority. This is the Genesis creation narrative. You see, you have to make a decision. Yeah. Ah. 
I see what you're saying. It's either divinity a- in divinity in a uh, in a creation. So the creation itself is the is the divine source, or a creator who created all things for the glory of God. Oh, the Bible. Yes, the mm. old path. We have two choices to make. That's the whole point with, with the Jesuitical thing anyway, is that, okay, you're going to see it either that, um, you know, <clears throat> this whole this whole Jesuit thing was created to completely uh, discredit uh, the the real truth, <laughs> and that's essentially what it means. And you know, it's so interesting, Michael, that you know, uh, Yerk Lisman recently sent me a video on um, this uh, Jesuit uh, general, uh, the most recent one, Arturo Sosa. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's two different videos in one video, and uh, I just can't post that to my channel without doing a, a breakdown of uh, what's going on there because it's a little bit too much, I think, for uh, here in the United States. Maybe in Europe it's better because I think Europeans are much more hip to what Jesuits really are. But in the United States, uh, we're surrounded with it. It's so in your face you don't even recognize it, Michael. Mm-hmm. That's the problem with li- with living here. You know, you got to remember only a month ago, or I'm sorry, a month, only a year ago, cor- correct me here, but uh, George Floyd in Minneapolis was so-called, uh, you know, um, martyred or whatever. You know, I mean, he's just become the martyr for the faith and, you know, the faith uh in uh, in Antichrist, let's put it that way. So you know, um, you know the the satanic system, the Antichrist system, has to have its martyrs, just like Jesus Christ and his faithful witnesses that brought us the gospel have their martyrs. It's the same thing, only different circumstances. Yes, Michael. Yeah, but I'm. Um trying to break it down to general terms. You see that I cannot help it that the Big Bang Theory came down from a Roman Catholic priest called George Lemaitre. But the, the, the problem is that this theory is in the mindset of people uh, buying that as the truth. Sure. That that, makes that, sense. That's the problem. See that we're not of addressing course. Jesuits. We're not addressing Catholics. No. We're just addressing the thing that you start making your own research. Start well, it's teachings, research. Michael, right? You want to be able, yeah, you're saying oh, we should question what we've been taught and we should go research out any questions that we have to make our conscience aware of what's really going on in this picture. Yeah, does it, does it make sense? Does it make sense to think that something came out of nothing? Does it make sense that everything, your absolutely complicated human body, was done randomly out of water, soup? Maybe a little fly. You see how, if you really think about that, that's so hilarious nonsense. But people get away with that because it has been taught by professors, schools, universities. That there was evolution and that this was a long time ago so that nobody has any book or any record. Uh, you see, this is just still theory. This is theory, people. And it has been sold in the schools and universities as truth, which it isn't. And you see, the deception is so far that sometimes people come up with the idea, oh, science and evolution and creation and science versus scripture and evolutions versus creations. Oh. We can combine everything. We can have ecumenical uh, science or something 
happens. So this, uh, I haven't read that book, but I stumbled across it today on uh, the usual channels on the internet. And uh, this Brian R. Donnelly thinks that uh, everything can be combined. So biblical uh, teachings can be combined with science. So it's, it's no contradiction, uh, but uh, everybody happy, everybody clap their hands. Yeah, the planet is 4.6 billion so years old. So typical, isn't it, Michael? Just yeah. so typical. Yeah. What if both were right? Yeah, you see, it cannot be true. It is either 4.5 billions or 6,000 years. You see, I wouldn't buy that book. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> it can't be both. It has to be one yeah, or the man, other. Yeah, man. Yeah, you will be made to to an ape with the very limited intelligence. Yeah, you see, you think you're smart. You're you're wearing a bag. You have your smartphone. Yeah, everybody tells you, oh, you're smart. You got best grades in high school. Yeah, but on the other hand, in the science uh, uh, lessons, yeah, they de degrade you down to an ape. Oh, in this day and age, you got to have your shot too. I mean, come on. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the, the multiple meaning of shots, huh? Headshot. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. science, Michael. I mean, when you put your faith in science, you put your faith in man, don't you? Yeah, because but what man science? created the thing to do its purpose. Do they tell you the whole purpose? Well, no, because they can't. <laughs> I, I think that Mr. Brian Donnelly is, is a smart man by uh, having a, making a living out of writing a book. But you see that the integration of science and biblical truth, <laughs> you see the, Bi the Bible speaks of science so-called. Uh, so, so, so the point is that Brian Donnelly does not read or at least understand, does not understand the Bible. Well, that, this is exactly where the world's at, Michael. They want both. Yeah. They want both, so they, they give you a give book. Up to yeah. give you that faith. Oh, you can have that faith because, yeah. yeah, we can mix the holy with the profane, can't we? Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. They they think they can, but the problem is that the Bible excludes the thinking. And I will, I will show you some Bible verses uh, uh, in, in, in uh, yeah, quite soon. Okay, so this was the book where people really think they can combine biblical science and worldly science. Okay, so the problem is that the Bible does condemn worldly science as it is. This is a very nice illustration, I think. Yeah, men want to uh, be their own humanism. God. I see that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. man, isn't that just it? Man. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a nice picture, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm a little bit angry about the crosses on the right side. But you see that what do people know about real Christianity at all? But the problem the problem is that evolution and creation are two things which are standing in absolute opposition. Either the world is six thousand years old or it is four point five billion. It cannot be the at the same. It cannot be true. Uh, at the same time. So what is right? What is wrong? Make up your own mind. We're not here to teach or to taught. We are just here to raise questions. So people want to have their own Ten Commandments, which they do not have, do now have. You remember about the Georgia Guidestones, huh? Keep humanity under 500 million. Okay, this is your worldly so-called Ten Commandments. And God says in the old Bible, which no, almost nobody reads anymore, that uh, uh, we shall be fruitful and multiply. So what do you think is in the mind and what, what is love and what is hate? To reduce humanity on the one hand to 500 million or less or to order the people to be fruitful and multiply. What is love and what is hate? Is it that complicated to find out that everything which happens here in the so-called world is against mankind? You see, gay marriage has nothing to do with reproduction, right? I'm not addressing any gay, lesbian, GBLT whatsoever. I'm just telling you that through gay relationships, no child's 
children will be born. That's a fact. It has nothing to do with the people itself. It's just a mere fact. You cannot argue about it. They cannot reproduce. It has nothing to do with the people itself. It just tells you that there are every means, they take every means which are necessary to stop the world population, which they claim would be a problem. Yeah, to break up a family means that uh, people are lost. They have the, the, now nowadays there are more singles than ever, more single households than ever. There are more gay marriages than ever. There is more pornography than ever. There are more abortions than ever. It's everybody. It's everything against mankind and the reproduction of mankind. I really have a hard time believing in that that people don't see this. It's against life. It is, it's against love. It's just pure hate. And people say, oh, I'm so selfish. I want to have fun in, in, in love and sex relationship, but I don't care for children. What do you think where, what, what women are supposed to, uh, to do in the first place? Having a career? Making money? Driving Maseratis? Don't you think that women got some special talents that men cannot have? And we come to that quite later. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm not angry. I'm just pointing it out. Sometimes I have to, to point it out straight, very straight. This is, is a very important question. If you believe in all these lies in the world out there, you'll be lost. Because people want you to be an egoistic being. Just think of yourself. Have pleasure. Yeah? But if you, if you, on the other hand, would be a Christian, then you would like, love to have a family. You would love to care for others. You would love to see your child being grown up. You know, I just wanted to point out something in this illustration down here. Um, <laughs> you know, Michael, you pointed out all the crosses uh, mm -hmm. in the uh, in the illustration that we're looking at of uh, Christi so-called Christianity. Look at the fella at the bottom there shooting his cannon at the very foundation mm -hmm. of the uh, the rock. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. He yeah, is. Yeah, yeah he yeah. is standing on. Mm -hmm. See, this is a good representation of what's really happening. Uh, mm -hmm. People inside of Christianity are actually working to destroy it itself. Mm -hmm. This is this is the problem that we got to really take a serious look at is that there are people on the inside that are mm -hmm. working against the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Antichrist wants to be Christ. Mm -hmm. He wants to be worshipped as Christ. So it's like the Ouroboros. You have this snake in a circle eating its own tail. It's it's uh, it's a very old problem that isn't very easily recognized until the spirit shows you exactly very specifically how it works in it. And that happens in your own life and in life lessons that are very difficult to learn. I can tell and I can vouch for that, Michael. Yeah, that's what I found this, uh, this illustration quite appropriate because mm -hmm. it said it's a problem is it Psalm 11.3 and you just mentioned the, the one who is destroying his own foundation and therefore I have inserted the Psalms 8.11.3. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes, that is perfect. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Yeah. Yeah, the foundations yeah, so, so, under of att under attack. That reminds me of Michael yeah, Dissemlian's book. Yeah. Yeah, you see that all the all the people in the evolution tower. You see, they are pointing with their cannons downwards to the uh, foundation of uh, God's word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but I just found it uh, two two hours ago, and I said, "Oh yeah, I I would have to insert it here." Okay, let let's let's move on. You see, like because I think the majority of people will will. Uh, 
will, will think out of the box uh, for the problems which are occurring if everybody just thinks of themselves you see we will have a murder violation uh, theft robbery everywhere you see that everybody should be his own god yeah this is satanism which says that do what thou wilt and christianity re christianity says there love thy neighbor as yourself so they are extremely opposite you cannot have a, a, a compromise <laughs> yeah? no, Compr compromise uh, does not mean truth yeah and you, you 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 get along this way or another but it doesn't tell you that it's truth I have to refer here to Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 27, especially. Yeah, so 27, uh, or in, in, in Jeremiah chapter 2, uh, it has been said that the pastors all transgressed against the Lord God and the prophets prophesied by Baal. So the anti-God means another word for Satan and walked after things that do not profit. And then it says that... Uh, Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? So speaking of their worship, their images and idols. And then comes the profound verse 27, which I would like to hear uh, from the mouth of Brett. It's about uh, evolution. If you really think that evolution has been originated by Georges Lemaitre or his uh, uh, or he, the uh, Charles Darwin guy, uh, you see, we are speaking about here from the book of Jeremiah, which was been uh, written down before the birth of Christ. So it's more than two thousand years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'll read it. Uh, verse yeah. twenty-seven, saying to a stock. Thou art my father, and to have a stone, thou hast brought me forth. For they have turned their back unto me, and not their face. But in the time of their trouble, they will say, Arise, and save us. Yeah. What does the evolution theory tells you that everything has been originated? Oh, there was a big bam, and then it rained, and out of the big, big soup, I don't know what the original um, English uh, meaning of, the, um, of, of this is, but you see that this has been mentioned here in the Bible, a stock and a stone, this is your father. And it rained and it poured down for millions of years onto the stone, and then the original uh, juice something like that has been created and then out of it there were the first uh, cells and organisms and that that this is what they tell you and the bible more than two thousand years ago tells you that there were people who were saying to a stock that they have been made or created from the seed of the stock and, and the stone has given birth and this is evolution. If you don't see the resemblance to evolution, think again, please. But this is a clear hint to the fact that also in the ancient times, people thought they were had been not a creator, but uh, that they worshipped images and idols. For example, here, stocks and stones. Ah, Stonehenge, somebody or sacred um, forests, like in Italy, yeah, the forest of Diane, Nemi, the town of Nemi. Uh, I, I've, I've talked about it extensively in, in German. Yeah, so this is just a theory which was in, in uh, had been originated thousands of years ago. And this deception is coming from Satan, from the serpent's twisted tongue. Yeah, and this is also, uh, you have to imagine that Satan was once a cherub. So one of the highest, highest, highest servants of the Lord God. And imagine, I know this is very biblical now here, and I've not inserted uh, the, the, the Bible text because it's, it, it's too obvious. It's uh, Revelation 12, 3. Imagine who the cherub 
or the dragon or the snake or the devil or Satan, which is now his name or his profession. His first profession was being Lucifer, the carrier of light, which is Jesus Christ, but he didn't obey to serve Jesus Christ. Yeah, so he rebelled in the heaven with whom, Brad, whom did Lucifer deceive in the heavens? Oh, goodness gracious, Michael. Um, I'm sorry. I can just tell you, you see ahead. that it was one third of the angels. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, you see that if he even deceived one third of the angels, can you imagine how smart Mr. Satan is? And can you can you think about that some science uh, professors or who else who think they are very smart can easily be manipulated and outsmarted by Satan if he has succeeded to deceive one third of the angels? If you are really believe in the Bible, then you must be aware that Satan is out top smart, much more smarter than any smart so-called smart science guy. Uh, which is a, just a just a man or women, and not only that, Michael. <clears throat> we're dealing with uh, really uh, extraordinary principles of vanity and of of idolatry and all the other principles that follow uh, this horde of uh, teaching. Yeah. So twelve four is the third stars of the path of part my 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 the third part of the stars of heaven. Yeah. He was cast out to the earth, Satan, and his angels were cast out of him. So he has his angels, he has his followers. Uh, followers we know from uh, Facebook, huh? Yeah, you oh, see but, but he he <laughs> sucked. He succeeded to deceive. I sense a little sarcasm. Yeah, but he <laughs> succeeded if you if you combine the verses four and nine. He succeeded to deceive the third part of the stars of heaven, which are angels. Yeah, he was cast onto the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Stars are angels in the Bible. Imagine well, what Michael, that means. I don't know about our listeners, and I don't know about you, Michael, but uh, I quit Facebook, uh, I think it was 11, 12 years ago. I just deleted my account. I found out a way to do it, and I got rid of it. Uh, yeah. I find uh, this uh, kind of uh, interaction, uh, the social networking kind of thing, to be very, very distracting. Mm hmm I prefer yeah, the traditional, uh, the traditional point of view, not the new one. But yeah, it just uh, keeps you from from reading real truth. It's just uh, entertainment. Yeah. Oh, but you course, see that if, if if Satan really succeeded in deceiving a third of the stars of the in, of the heaven, yeah, you see, he's 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 top smart. He's one of the smartest uh, spirits out there. And even the new. Uh, version of Charlie's Angels. I know this sounds a little bit ridiculous in that uh, combination of the Bible verse, maybe. You see that, but these are Charlie's Angels. You see them from behind. You don't see their faces. So they turn their back on you. Huh? What does that mean? Did you did you realize verse uh, 227 from Jeremiah? Or what was it? Verse. Uh, yeah. What Chapter was two, it? Verse 27, yeah. Yeah they, yeah, they turned their back on me and not their face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so these angels, they do, you do not see their face and they are uh, holding out the sign of, his, of, the, um, of the goat. So this is a oh, Satan sign. Oh, but Michael, can't we have fun? This is so fun. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, it depends what, what, what fun, on, fun for you is. If fun, fun is your limited amount of time being uh, satanic in the world and you will make it in this world for a measly uh, 70, 80 years, then you go for it. Then it's just fun, but it's just once. Huh? 
it's once and it's not fun. It's just you make your fun uh, on behalf of others. You see that it's it's just you and nobody else. It's just for see, your if benefit. They, if they said Charlie's fallen angels, they'd be a little bit closer to the truth here. But no, 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 no. We can't. You see, that. you see, they're, they're you see the difference. Angels, see. You see the difference to the angels, Charlie's angels from the 1970s, where you could see all the faces and they were smiling. Now, in in as days and ages are getting, times are getting more satanic. You don't see their faces anymore. They got the famous red black color scheme which is satanism and they even flash a satanic sign on on the back yeah so this this sign actually means satan my ass oh, but you see that sorry right for the... right 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 <laughs> yeah, but really people very people derogatory don't michael people don't get it yeah so and 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 we got the same thing around with the universe people think about yeah we are living in the universe I mean, okay really yeah. i mean and realistically this is straight out of the pit of hell we're looking at an image straight out of the pit of hell in yeah to see how how yes. times have changed in, in 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 just a few years of time yeah if you see that here uh, original charlie's angels it was one of my favorites uh, uh television series uh, when i was a uh, yeah, you see that. Oh, you see that. This are uh, yeah. These were the first Charlie's Angels. Okay, they seem to pray in a Catholic way. Yeah, okay. But you see that. Uh, you see their faces, don't you? They don't flash any signs. Yeah. Okay. This is a quite uh, yeah intermediate picked, huh? Yeah, here's here is getting to be dangerous because it's fire here burning something. But you see that you see their faces and they're smiling. But you see, we're now in the 21st century, for Satan's sake, huh? Now this is satanic. But people don't get oh, it's cool. Yeah, you, you see that nowadays language has turned. What what once was great and oh, this is a hot. Yeah, lengthy. you could almost say that it's flipped onto yeah. the new agenda which yeah. the new agenda is that uh, we're demonic to the core, but we don't tell you that. You have to read and study your Bible and know it, just like Michael and myself, before you can really start to see it. And that's just tough love. Yeah. Yeah, you see that it's it ju just for the... Um just for comparison reasons, you see, I can copy it here, and you see that was what 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 once was uh, family entertainment. Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! A bit of big, big, little big, big. <laughs> uh, what was uh, family entertainment, uh, more or less? Yeah. Uh, now becomes very obvious what it actually is. Now uh, this is 1977, and this is uh, 2000 something. Huh? And you see that people in the science, they come up with theories. Yeah? So one theory is um, there is a universe, a universe, one universe. Universe means the totality of existing things. So there's just one, the whole world, which is just one. Some people believe it's been a composite word, uh, Consisting of uni, which means one, and verse, which means, uh, yeah, what it is, a verse, yeah? So it would be like in the Genesis, uh, let there be light. This is one verse, when we know that everything was spoken into existence by Jesus Christ. If you don't know or remember, then look up to John 1.1, 1, 1, yeah? The word was God. Yeah, so Jesus Christ is God. And yeah, Jesus world, Christ spoke the, the word became existence. flesh and dwelt among the us. The world yes. became flesh, yes. Mm -hmm. So, and universe is a combined word, com combination of uh, Latin universal, which means all things. Yeah, but you see, Latin is not the original tale of the earth. Huh? Latin was just in the earth when the Romans and the Latins existed, but not in the old ancient Mesopotamian times. <laughs> yeah, you have to be very careful because Latin cannot be the origin of all languages. So it can be true that universe actually refers to the Bible. When in uh, Genesis 1-3, uh, the Lord God says, uh, let there be light. Just uh, flip for it. 
Yeah, I agree. I could have been prepared a little bit better, but you cannot imagine how much uh, elaborated the script is. Uh, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. The problem is that people who refer to that very verse here, they have forgotten that there was something in existence before God said there was light, which was heaven and earth. So you cannot refer to that verse, in my opinion. Okay. Um, of course, there are certain things we do not know, even when we read the Bible. Yeah, because God does not reveal it to us. But that's another thing. But the thing is, even in the universe, scientists are not do not agree. Because many sciences, scientists now, they think about a multiverse. Yeah, a hypothetical group of multiple universes. When universe means the whole world, there are certain whole worlds. <laughs> I don't get it that even scientists don't see the contradiction in it. Even when the whole world means exists of everything there is. There cannot be something else if you have a second universe. The second universe is not a universe anymore. It's also not a multiverse because you see the universe includes everything. Every atom, everything. So you, you can thrash it out in the garbage can. But of course, many famous uh, scientists like Stephen Hawking, you know, the guy in the roller chair, which was more famous uh, for his uh, strange theories than anything else, uh, who has deceased uh, uh, lately, I think a few years ago, uh, he spoke about that God is non-existing and uh, he believed in uh, multiple universes. Yeah? yeah, you see, you can believe in your, in your toaster, yeah, that he can produce uh, pizza. Yeah, you can believe in your washing machine that that she can recreate a record because it's all it's circular also. But you see that it has nothing to do with logic. When the universe is a universe, then it contains everything. So it means there cannot be a second universe because then also if you name it a multiverse, it's it's a totally different approach. A multiverse cannot consist of a universe because universe contains everything. Can you imagine, Brett, how uh, I am not a physician, I have not studied on a university, and even I, dumb as I am, simple as I am, yeah, see the contradiction in the theory of world-class scientists. Other universes, ah, our, it, it hurts, doesn't it, uh, Brett? Mm -hmm. It hurts, huh? If you really think about it, and you, you have to, you don't have to agree with me or us. Just please make your own thoughts. And then you see out of the blue that they, they, they fool you. They really fool you. They, they laugh at you. And they're making big money with it because you have only, you have to bear a title and a certain profession. Yeah, and everybody thinks, oh, oh, no, 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 I'm not contradicting, I'm not getting into an argument, he's a study, I have no chance, and oh, it must be right. Because everybody believes it, no? so it must be right. But the problem is that the majority of people is still and was in the Antichrist spirit, meaning that the majority of people will be fooled and deceived. And that's the problem with it. The majority always is in the Antichrist spirit, and this automatically means that the majority is always wrong. And the majority won't agree with that because they think they are smart. The problem is um, they are not that smart as Stephen Hawking's because he's a, he's, he, yeah, he's, he was a world re, worldwide uh, famous uh, physician or some other scientist. So people follow people instead of their own conscience or their own thinking their own rational logic. It's all very logic. If it contradicts itself, it cannot be true. So it's the same with the age of the Earth. It cannot be 4.5 billions of years and uh, 6,000 years at the same time. My, 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 my. Maybe you, you now get a glimpse on, on the things. This is just the foundation of it. It's maybe session six of 100 something, Yeah, where, where it all leads. 
Yeah, we have been lied all over again. We have been filled, filled with theory. We have to uh, remember to get good grades in the schools and universities, but we, we have been fooled all over again because we are not trained to use our own brain. We are just trained apes. Welcome to the evolution theory. Well, that, that's a good point, Michael, and, and something else I can add to that is that uh you know uh some lyrics from a song of mine actually are uh they taught us to listen they taught us to hear but what did they teach us about uh um you know they taught us to learn but what did they teach us about how to discern is the point mm -hmm. you know the spirit of the living god is what is the ultimate possession for a Christian today. And that's what we wish here on this YouTube channel and on Michael's YouTube channel is to give you the tools you need in order to have the spirit enter into your life so that you can interact with that great power that God has gifted us. It's not obtainable through works. It's not obtainable through worldly teaching. It's only obtainable through the scriptures and knowledge of Jesus Christ through your own personal walk in your life. Because, you know, you can't just be silent with uh, the testimony of Jesus Christ. It is an interactive uh principle isn't it michael mm -hmm. it's interactive it is um <clears throat> bearing testimony to your friends and your family mm -hmm. that uh the truth really is not a, a matter of of uh personal opinion it has nothing to do with personal opinion it has everything to do with the laws and the testimony of jesus christ and even even in the King James Bible page, you see uh, errors. I see errors here. Yeah, it, it's it just uh, came to me when you were speaking. I said that oh, this is not a correct picture. The picture is, it, it's it's look looks like a sun or something like that. The creation of light. You see that we do not have to make uh, any. We image. shouldn't make images or idols, right? Oh, yeah. Well, it's yeah. just yeah. that people are. They're, they're using images to help calm down troubled souls. This is something I struggle with too, Michael, and then I've come to this, this uh, conclusion that I just leave it be, you know? There's so much wrong in this world. If you were to pick out every tiny little portion of it, I think you no, would. No, I just don't <laughs> refer to images and idols. You see, that is just yes. the, creation, the creation of light. But you see, that is a contradiction in itself. But I think we do not go into that unless session 70 or so, because that would absolutely. Isn't that something? And this is on the uh, the King James. Yeah, yeah. King James uh, yeah. Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Web page. Yeah. You see, and that's, that's you see, that you, you can have a, a multiverse. That's theory. the trouble. You can have yeah, you remember way back, Michael, when they didn't allow images in the church at all. Hmm. None. No, there, weren't, there were no images in the gathering of the Israelites, you know. And uh, I think it, it's definitely in our modern day and age, of course, after the gospel went to the Gentiles, um, you know, after the stoning of Stephen, that we've um, come to this uh, gargantuan uh, creation called the Roman Catholic Church, and they accepted images and idolatry long, long time ago. And uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, the Roman Catholic system is, is uh, a very... Um, what can we say? It's it's a, it's a troubling thing, but at the same time, um, if you don't see the trouble with it, then you're not going to correct the problem. See? Yeah, 
And this is, I, I think we, we, we end the session and we can do another shorter session uh, after that because I think we are going going to another subject now. But uh, can you can you imagine, Brad, that uh, everything else we have touched on, which has been explained to us as a fact, yeah, it's just a theory. It's just hypothesis. It has nothing to do <laughs> with with truth. N not not the Big Bang, nor the evolution, nor the multiverse, nor a string theory, or a, a space time warp. You see, you can on and on and on. These are this is these are just theories. These are theories made up in their minds. This is what I call science fiction. It's yeah. not science. It is fiction. Yeah, that's an interesting point. You know, you have the rise of science fiction. <laughs> this is yeah, a sure. characteristic. Yeah, sure. People think that everything of, is possible by just clicking up a button and you you travel with Michael. Warp speed. This this is a characteristic that came about after the creation of the nation state of Israel. You know, yeah. and that's another whole huge problem. Uh, how did we ever come about with the nation state of Israel in 1948? Mm-hmm. You know, Israel was a uh, a huge following in old times of those who professed to have God. And it was before the coming of the Messiah. So they were looking forward to, they were living their lives supposed to be looking forward to the coming of Jesus Christ thousands of years, hundreds of years before he came into the world. So, yeah, there's a huge story here. Yeah, it's it's called history. <laughs> His story, yeah. His story, yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, it's, Maybe it's, they should call it not history, but their story. It's all about what Michael and I just touched on in this session is... Uh, this influence that happens in this world where somehow we get drawn out of uh, of where our faith should be bringing us to, to the scriptures and to studying the scriptures with our families and with our closest and dearest friends. Instead of doing that, they bring us into this court where, you know, the, the angel of the bottomless pit is working. I'm sad to say, you know, Revelation 12 does have a lot to do with it. Not a small amount. Yeah, but all their fiction comes from their imagination, all their inspiration. Yeah, so they are, their fictional theories, they are the the result of their meditations or maybe all their sure, spiritual... Sure, sure, the new yeah. religion, Michael, it's yeah, all about... Also, all about that yeah yeah on their, spiritual and... on their spiritual exercises you see then 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 their mind they grasp the oh out of a sudden so see uh, out of a sudden means just they have received it's, the it's information mysticism, more or less it's mysticism only applied what? to a a scale where we can use uh, other principles like mathematics and what have you to tie it all together and to give you no alternative um, other than to comply and essentially that's what the roman catholic church has been doing uh ever since it morphed from you know the previous beast which was uh you know greece you know you have the previous beast being greece then medo persia then babylon you know and yeah, and where, how about the people, uh, these these scientists are not going to admit there was a flood, are they? No, of course not. Well, they might admit there were floods, but they they won't, you know, ever get you thinking it was a biblical flood. Oh, no. Because because their foundation is, be is, is, is absolutely different, because they want to become as gods, and so they don't they cannot accept God. So they have to come up with their theories, and their theories are being imaginations of their mind, which are the result of their meditations and of their spiritual exercises. Now, that's the thing, that you don't have any any thought 
on your own, you have to receive the thoughts out of the spiritual world. Yeah, Please. but to me, Michael, I would boil that down and just say mysticism, you know? Okay, it's, yeah. It's, it's the mystical mind. I mean, this is, this is so true, and this is the trouble with art too, Michael, as far as I'm concerned, is when you tap into this so-called mystical or mysticism, uh, yeah, you're we're going right back to Revelation 12 again, aren't we? Yeah, you see that science contains the world or the explanation called information. Yeah, so the knowledge by study information. But there's also wrong science. Yeah, so what it just came up with the with the with a quote which was supposed to be originated from Mark Twain. He said once that if you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. And if you read the newspaper, you're misinformed. Yeah. So <laughs> the only possibility is to combine the sources and to compare everything and to, to get out on your own and to study the things if there were so like the Bereans did. If there were so, if the things are really are so, then there can only be one universe. And if the things are coming randomly, you see, uh, why are the people functioningly on this complex body, for example? You see that it, it does absolutely contradict everything on, on their theory. And so they don't have to prove that their theory, they just came up with, the, they are coming up with theories and just another theory. And then it's an atom, then it's a quantum, and then it's a something else. And then it's a God's particle. And uh, <clears throat> you see that, oh, now we're getting for the smallest. And now we're getting even no, more smaller. And now it's getting this absolute smallest. And now it's an absolute of the absolute of the absolute of the absolute. You see what this is getting at. You see, the truth which has been presented to you in 1950 is the lie of the 1970s. And the truth which we have presented to you in 2020 will be the lie of 2030. Maybe 2040. I don't know. But what I know is that they are out there to deceive you. Because the majority of people still was and is in the Antichrist Christ spirit. Yeah. And that's what has been meant with to blind someone with science, confused by the use of big words or complex explanations, originally noted as a phrase from Australia. Yeah? To confuse. Yeah? The serpent wants to confuse you. Because if you go down the nitty gritty of it all, yeah, you can look up at all the strange theories of the string theory. Oh, it looks so nice. And uh, you see, and uh, now it's come all the strange worlds. You have bosons, you have fermions, you have ADS, CVFT correspondence. Please don't, don't you ever forget the, uh, this is, uh, um, sarcasm now yeah don't forget the ads cft correspondence it's a quantum field theory don't forget that it's it's part of the string theory and then you see you have to go to the fundamental and you see you see you have to consider this you have to consider that and this is just a theory but it could be so that it is so or it could be else but uh, it, it it the the, the truth will lie within and this could be so or it could be otherwise and it could be this and it could be super gravity and it could be this and it could be other things you have to have everything on on your on your computer and then you can start to evaluate the things and then you come down to the quantum gravity and you come down to another blah 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 blah, blah. you see you where, where you're going it yeah what has it what was the meaning of it to blind someone with science confused by the use of big words or complex explanations if that is not a complex explanation then what is mm -hmm. And the Bible, it's very simple. There was an intelligent being called God who created everything because we are created with intelligence. We are not apes. We have not originated by apes. People think they are smart and at the same time they think they were created apes. Or you they know, are, they are, that, uh, whole, uh, uh, that whole spiel you just went into, Michael, about confusing i mean that is the art of sophistry is it not yeah but to think of, of apes as predecessor of mankind ah oh, that gives me a really a hard time you see that they're coming up with lucy but that it's not it's it, it just uh, that's just for another script i think i'm oh, done sure. now i need a, sure. i need a break 
at the moment, yeah. but I hope it was very interesting to go to the foundations and please make up your own mind. Think about it. If you if you, if you calm down at the evening or on the weekend, you've, you've got nothing on your hands. Yeah. So then really calm down. Are you an intelligent, intelligent being originated by a divine almighty God or are you just a successor of apes? Thank you very much for listening. See you, hear you next time. Handing it over to my beloved brother, Brett. Yes, Michael, thank you for our lesson today into the religion of science. And I, I'd like to just sum up what Michael just said into this term, sophisticate, which is to make impure by admixture from medieval Latin. It's, uh, yeah, I'm not going to read this. <laughs> <laughs> the past principle of, uh, yeah, sophistry or sophist is it's it's so confusing, uh, you know. But really, when we break it down, it's it's very simple. Uh, the serpent's trying very hard to confuse. Yes, very very difficult to make it clear. You know, he wants to obfuscate everything that is so easy to those of us that want to read the bible you know yes to blind someone with science to confuse by the use of big words and complex explanations that sums it up michael and i'll be looking forward to catching up with you next time god bless everyone maranatha <laughs>